Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Good. Um, I guess the meeting hasn't started yet, huh? Correct, yeah. I'm getting okay. ready to take it off practice Thank mode. You. Is Thanks, everybody CJ. ready? Everybody ready to come off practice mode? Room test. Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We are ready. Good afternoon, Commissioner Partridge. This is Troy for staff. I have taken it off practice mode. We are live and recording. Thank you, Troy. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Board of County Commissioners Land Use and Public Hearing for Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020. And I will ask if Commissioner Layden is on the line. And Commissioner Layden, if you are on the line, you may be muted. Nope, I'm on the line. Okay, very well. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Thomas is present. So we do have a quorum. Would you all please stand and join us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Mr. Ingalls, do we have certification of our agenda today? We do, Mr. Chair. You have three items on your agenda today. Um, they all required some form of public notice. Item 2A required published notice. That was accomplished on June 11th, 2020. Item B required published, mailed, and posted notice. That was accomplished May 28th, May 15th, and May 29th, respectively. Finally, item 2C required published and posted notice that was accomplished on May 14th and May 15th, respectively. With that, you have proper notice and, juris and therefore jurisdiction on all three items. Thank you, sir. Do either the commissioners have any disclosure for any item on our agenda today? I have none, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I have none, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I have none. Item number 2A is our public hearing agenda. So A is Single Track Trails Incorporated, Residential Lease, presenting for staff, Cheryl Matthews, Open Space Director. Good afternoon, Commissioner, Cheryl Matthews for staff. Uh, as you stated, this item before you is for Single Track Trails, Greg Mazu as the president, as a short-term residential lease while they're constructing phase one of the, of the Sandstone Ranch Trail. As you know, you approved the extension of their con construction contract earlier today in the business meeting. And this is a lease for them to be able to have their employees stay in the middle house and the bunk house, as well as to park a, 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 an RV on the property for additional housing. They can have us employees who will be working on the, on the trails while they're doing it. They're based out of Grand Junction, Colorado. So if they would have had to find housing in Castle Rock or Colorado Springs, and it just seemed a lot more efficient to have them on site since we did have the availability of these homes for them to stay there so that um, they can get out on the construction site earlier in the morning and stay later in the afternoon. So it was recommended by the county attorney's office that having them stay on the property could not be part of their construction contract. So it seemed like the, the best way to do it was through this short-term lease that would go through the end of the year. However, as you know, we fully anticipate that they will complete construction in mid-September for the trail opening. So they will be paying us $100 a night for each night they stay in each of the houses and an additional $20 a night for each night that the RV is parked at the middle house. So um, that will actually help us defray the cost of the trail, but it couldn't be part of the same contract. So I didn't have any special presentation, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Cheryl. Questions for staff? 
Cheryl, this is Commissioner Thomas. Thank you for that explanation. So on our cover sheet, it says the lease requires payment of $100 per night for the houses. Is that 100 for both houses or $100 for each house? It's $100 for each house and then the additional $20 a night to park the RV. Thank you. I have no further questions. Commissioner Layden. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Cheryl, for that wonderful presentation. Of course, uh, I, I know the citizens of Douglas County couldn't be more excited to see trails constructed and, and more progress on this wonderful piece of property. And uh, I just want to thank you for the, the hard work and the coordination of all of that. Uh, certainly will be in favor of this uh, application. Thank you, sir. Cheryl, thank you for bringing this forward. And uh, just to check, you know, hopefully they know this does not come with room service, but also on a, on a serious note, will they be made aware that the total sandstone property will not be for their use, that it is just for transportation to and from the housing areas and the use of the housing areas while they're there? Absolutely, they do understand that. There's no recreation, they're not allowed to have guests. So it's just there for them to spend the night and cook their meals and just stay there while they're working, but no recreation at all. Very well, thank you. I have no further questions, no further questions for staff. At this time, I'll ask if there's anyone in our audience would like to address the board regarding item 2A on our agenda. Seeing no one in the room. Ms. Dunning, do we have any hands raised? I see no ha hands raised for item A. I do not believe we have received any email notification. Heads are shaking no. So at this time I'll close, close public comment, bring it back to the board for any further questions, discussion and or motion. Mr. Chair, I have a motion to approve Single Track Trails Inc. residential lease. Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor state aye. 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 Aye, and the motion passes. Thank you, Cheryl, for bringing this forward and good job getting that completed. We'll look forward and I know the public will look forward to the opening of the trails and the use of sandstone. Thank you very much. And I might just mention that Amy Knox deserves a lot of credit because she's been overseeing all of the construction and helping with the design of the trail and doing the contracts too, so she deserves a lot of credit. Thank you, great job, Amy. Our next item on the agenda, 2B, is a res resolution vacating the easternmost portion of Birch Avenue, located in the southeast one quarters of section seven, township six south, range 66 west of the 6 p.m., Douglas County, Colorado. Presenting for staff, Cindy Perez. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, Cindy Perez, representing Planning Services. The request is Birch Avenue, easternmost portion road vacation, project file SB 2020-018. The public right-of-way is owned by the Board of County Commissioners. Frank Long is an abutting landowner and applicant. Additional public correspondence was received on this project yesterday and today, and that correspondence has been forwarded to the commissioners via email. On Monday, June 22nd, we received a signed petition, emails from Deborah Sherwood, including various background documents and copies of a signed petition, email from Norma Knapp, Leslie Knapp, Keith and Tracy Moe, Sharon Beberick, Sherry Kruger, and an email from Barb Daniel. Prior to the hearing today, we've received email from Kenneth Ramsey, Douglas Denoy, Billy Daniel, and the Grandview Estates Homeowners Association. This is a request to vacate the easternmost portion of Birch Avenue in Grandview Estates. This section of Birch Avenue is not constructed and has not been developed for public access. 
The area extends approximately 350 feet east of 6th Street in Grandview Estates and ends. The abutting landowners have maintained this section and would like to acquire ownership by splitting the vacated portion of right-of-way equally between the two properties. The intent of the road vacation is a review and approval process for various types of public road vacation requests. In this case, the easternmost portion of Birch Avenue was established by Platt, but hasn't been built or used for vehicle access. The road vacation process, be oh, I apologize. Did oh, sorry about that. The road vacation process begins with the submittal of an application. Following a review period by referral agencies, public notice is given for a public hearing before the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners. The Planning Commission heard the request at its June 15, 2020 public hearing. The Planning Commission had various questions about the right-of-way vacation process itself. Staff was asked about trail opportunities for Grandview Estates and presented two maps that were prepared for a presentation to the Homeowner Association in 2008. The two members of the public indicated that the road was used for public access to the adjacent Stonegate Village Metro District track for community events, um, horses, bikes, and pedestrians. The other resident stated that the developer had established an equestrian trail within the track for Grandview Estate residents as part of the development process in 1999. The two members of the public that spoke for the vacation said that they have not witnessed people using this connection, that it was unsafe for horse travel, that the barbed wire fence at the boundary had been illegally cut, and that there were no trails to connect to at the end of Birch Avenue. The applicants noted that the old trail was completely overgrown with weeds and that the district indicated that it would not maintain the trail. The Planning Commission found that the request met the approval standards for a road vacation and recommended approval by a vote of eight to zero with one standard condition of approval regarding technical corrections. They did request that staff do further research on the background of trail access within the district's track. Staff notes that it had previously researched the issue of a trail or other use commitments made by the district to Grandview Estates as part of their 1999 Stonegate subdivision file and found no information. Staff has asked both the district and homeowner association for any additional background, but none has been received to date. The area of right-of-way to be vacated is outlined in red. It's located within Grandview Estates, east of 6th Street and north of Lincoln Avenue. The property is zoned estate residential. Immediately to the east of the right-of-way is a tract owned by the Stonegate Village Metro District outlined in yellow. Further north of that tract is the Chambers Reservoir owned by the Arapahoe County Water and Wastewater Authority. A 20-acre county-owned and maintained open space is located south of Birch Avenue between 2nd and 3rd. This area, outlined in green, was platted for equestrian and recreational uses for the Grandview subdivision. It contains an equestrian riding arena and is the area that has been used for community events such as picnics and cleanups. No change in access to the open space area is proposed with this road vacation. This aerial shows the portion of Birch Avenue outlined in red. Sixth Street runs north-south on the western boundary. 
The property abutting on the east is platted as track B, Stonegate filing number 8B, owned by the Stonegate Village Metropolitan District. Birch Avenue was created with the original plat for Grandview Estates in 1957. As was typical at the time, roads were platted to the perimeter of the subdivision to allow for future road connections should the surrounding properties subdivide and develop. In 1996, the property to the east was platted and dedicated to the Stonegate Village Metro District for utility and other public purposes. Drainage and water facilities have been developed within the tract. The tract was included with approval of a location and extent application for the construction of Chambers Reservoir in 2010 for siting of the detention pond. As noted by the district, the tract has not been developed for pedestrian use. I'm sorry. Um, Intermountain Rural Electric Association responded to the referral that they will require a separate utility easement agreement with the landowner abutting on the north portion of Birch Avenue to accommodate an existing overhead electric line. Frank Long has contacted IREA and is prepared to finalize an easement following the road vacation. The vacation resolution will reserve an easement for existing utilities within the former right-of-way. Stonegate Village Metro District owns the tract of land abutting Birch Avenue to the east and has informed us that no pedestrian or equestrian trails have been developed within the tract and that it's intended only as a drainage tract and not for public use. They are neither for or against the road vacation. The Grandview Estates Homeowners Association responded that none of the committee members were against the request. Since the, since the Planning Commission hearing, the county did receive additional correspondence from the Homeowner Association indicating that the Metro District tract is not used for community events such as picnics and cleanups. When these have been held in the recent past, events have occurred either on private lots or the county owned Grandview Park located be between 2nd and 3rd Streets. Residents within Grandview Estates have sent comment letters objecting to the proposed vacation stating that it's used for riding horses, bicycles, or walking, and would prefer that a conservation easement be created on this land, as well as all remaining county-owned land in and around the subdivision. Additional letters were received on the request and have been forwarded to the board. The letters indicate that the right-of-way should not be vacated as residents use it to access the adjacent track for a variety of recreational purposes. As noted in the Stonegate Village Metro District's response, the track is not intended for public recreational use. With the location and extent for the Chambers Reservoir, a pedestrian trail was constructed at Dogwood Avenue around the reservoir to Chambers Road. The trail leads to the intersection at Hazley Drive where pedestrians can safely get across Chambers at the improved sidewalk or crosswalk, excuse me. There is no sidewalk along the west side of Chambers Road. This is a view looking east from 6th Street toward the portion of Birch Avenue to be vacated. This is looking west from the end of Birch Avenue showing the area to be vacated. 
Cindy, this is Jeanette. I don't think the slides are forwarding. Oh, okay. Um, you saw this slide? This is the one with the aerial view. Okay, there's the site view. Oh, there's a delay. I'm sorry. Okay. Is this far enough to go back? This is the first site photo you referenced. Yes. It's a view looking east from 6th Street toward the portion of Birch Avenue that is to be vacated. Hopefully it's forwarded because this is a slide looking west from the end of Birch Avenue showing the area to be vacated. This is looking north along the eastern boundary fence line that's between Grandview Estates and the property owned by Stonegate Village Metro District. This is a list of the approval standards for a road vacation and are discussed in detail in the staff report. Staff has assessed the application in accordance with Article 7B of the subdivision resolution. Should the board find that the approval standards for the road vacation are met, the following proposed condition should be considered for inclusion in the motion. One, prior to recordation of the road vacation resolution, all minor technical corrections shall be made to the satisfaction of Douglas County. And two, all commitments and promises made by the applicant or the applicant's representative during the public hearing and or agreed to in writing and included in the public record have been relied upon by the Board of County Commissioners in approving the application. Therefore, such approval is conditioned upon the applicant's full satisfaction of all such commitments and promises. The board shall evaluate the request, staff report, referral agency comments, and public testimony, and shall approve, conditionally approve, table for further study, or deny the request. This concludes staff's presentation. I'm available to take questions on the staff report. Otherwise, Frank Long and Steve Bokros are here to discuss the proposed road vacation. Thank you, Cindy. Any questions for staff at this time? I have none, thank you. I have a couple, Mr. Chair, but I'll reserve those for the applicant's presentation. Very well, and I too have a couple questions, but I will wait to bring those forward. So at this time, we'll bring it to... Commissioners, just for the record, before you start with the next phase, the emails identified by Cindy have all been distributed to the board already. We're trying to make sense of this technology necessary world so that you can have things in advance so you can read them. And that was primarily so Commissioner Layden would also have them. We do have two additional handouts that, that we know of since we cut off being able to forward them to you and process that, so I'll identify those at the appropriate time. Uh, that has already been emailed by Dan Dirtz to Commissioner Layden, so he probably has seen that even before you. So before you start with the applicant's presentation, just understand there are two more handouts, uh, and then there's an email summarizing all of those emails that Cindy read off by name. Thank you, Mr. And I can Engel. confirm that I've received that, Mr. Engel. Thank you, Commissioner. At this time, would the applicant, Mr. Frank Long, like to address the board? And I believe, I'm sorry, I did not catch the other name. I know it's in our report, but I didn't have it. So if, if you would so kindly state your name, the spelling of your last name, and your address for the record when you speak, that'd be great. I'm Frank Long. My address is 12230. I'm, I'm sorry. 
Okay, now the mic's on. Now. Uh, I'm Frank Long, L-O-N-G. Address is 12230 North 6th Street, Parker, 80134. Mr. Long, could I have you move maybe a little more to the center so the microphone catches up your voice? Uh, Usually you can stand there normally, but maybe just a little more centered over the microphone. You want me to repeat that? or I think we can hear you fairly well now. Okay. Thanks, sir. So, yes, repeat it. I'll repeat it. I'm Frank Long, L-O-N-G. My address is 12230 North 6th Street, Parker, 80134. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I wanted to touch base on a couple of things that were uh, addressed in some of the referrals and in some of the emails and some of the other things. Just to bring it uh, to your, uh, bring it up to date on what is there. There's a, a couple of the referrals that were saying that, uh, that we did not maintain that property, that somebody else, uh, the past owner did, and that he did uh, mow on the Stonegate side so his son could go to uh, the, the high school. That was untrue. I actually took the wire off my back fence and mowed back in there. And when I mowed back there, it wasn't for anyone to walk in there. It was for fire mitigation to keep the, because Stonegate does not uh, maintain anything in there. So I did it myself. That's what that was done. So whoever was saying that, they were misinformed on why that was the way it was. Uh, the street or the fence at the end of the, uh, the east end did have barbed wire across it. There used to be a ranch that was up off of 470 and the cattle used to roam back there. Well, after he sold his ranch and took the cattle out, that fence was cut. And the wire is actually still there. It's just pulled to the south and to the north. Then there were posts put in so that the horses could get through. And uh, they started having uh, four wheelers going in there so they came back and moved the posts closer together so just now one horse can go through. It used to be set for two. Uh, that was another thing. I think someone was uh, misinformed on, on what the fence was like in there. Um, we also, again, we have been maintaining it, keeping it down because since I've been there, I've been there 25 years. Uh, since I've been there, this the county has never, had never come down. They came down once and mowed in there probably, oh, maybe two years ago. And uh, it used to be a dump. Uh, some of the older people told me that was a dump there. So there's steel, there's uh, a lot of things under the soil that uh, when I would uh, go back there and walk and stuff, I'd run across a hubcap. Even uh, where I had stables at one time when I was putting some posts in there, I was running into things. I thought, what, what is this? No gold or anything, just uh, garbage. Um, also, the, uh, after the road was put in, uh, uh, Chambers Road was put in, the kids were using that to get across to the high school. But uh, as they expanded it and went to what it is now, five lanes, that and the uh, speed limit is 45. I was telling people, the kids should not be using that at all, not to run across there. Because it's a matter of time before we have one of the parents getting a call that their kid is not here anymore. So, you know, I, I think it's a good idea to stop them. So we did contact the school and let them know. We also did have the track team coming through there and uh, running up, up there, but they were blocking. They'd run the streets at Grandview. And uh, then they wouldn't give the right away for cars even going through. They would stay right on the street doing what they were doing. Well, they have stopped since then. And uh, the, uh, the uh, 
Let's see here. Excuse me. Oh, they actually, the county put in a sidewalk up at Lincoln and Six. They put a sidewalk in there just to allow the kids to get across at uh, the metered or controlled intersections. And I had a guy from the county down there one day and I asked him, I said, oh, what's going on? He said, oh, I'm just looking. He said, we're putting a sidewalk up at, uh, at uh, Lincoln and uh, Chambers. He said, for the kids to get to a controlled intersection. He said, we don't want them using this. And now that Stonegate has put in their referral that this is, is not, they don't want people using it as an access. It is private property. That there's, there's no reason. I have another referral saying that, well, where are the kids going to play uh, volleyball, soccer and stuff? They've never used it for any of that. It's never, ever been used for that. 25 years I've been there. Horses, as far as the horses going through there, years and years ago, I would get four horses maybe a, a month going through there. Now, I don't think I've had two in five years. Nobody uses it anymore. That's why I am starting. I wanted to do this vacate. They don't use it. Now, whether the horse people have left or not, or they have the ones that used to use it, I don't know. But we were putting up the sign and a lady pulled up and uh, she had her mucking boots on. She addressed us and said that, uh, she said that I don't know why we explained to her what this sign was and that we were going to uh, ask to vacate the property line. And she said, well, she didn't know what that meant. So I explained to her what it was and that uh, people are posing it. Uh, the horse people, and I said that uh, they, uh, she said, well, why would they want access there? And I said, I, I can't tell you why. I said, they're not supposed to be in there. We're, we found out Stonegate doesn't even want them in there. So she said, well, I ride up on the north, uh, the northwest side. She said, it's, there's less traffic. And she said, their streets have uh, uh, wider sidewalks, so to speak, or the drainage areas. They have wider places for it. Then there's also, they're saying that there's nowhere for them to ride. They've got 22 acres between second and third, and uh, it's to the south of Birch, down at the end of Birch. There's an open space, and that's what it is designated for, horse riding. And we do the cleanups, and we do the uh, barbecues and stuff there also. There was another referral. Somebody said, well, why don't we turn it into a sanctuary for the prairie dogs? That's just what horses need, is uh, prairie dogs there. Uh, also, the, uh, the referral from Stonegate was that uh, one of the referrals said that Stonegate said this is open space. Well, they did say that. They said it was open space but specifically for drainage. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Long. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stephen Bokros. That's B as in boy, O-K-R-O-S. My address is 12180 North 6th Street. I am Frank's neighbor, neighbor on the other side of this Birch vacation request. Um, I'm a professional engineer. I just wanted to give a couple of pointers out. The, the photos that were shown and the aerials that were shown, it looks like a nice flat piece of ground. Um, there's approximately 20 to 30 feet of fall. I haven't measured it, but it's approximately 20 to 30 feet of fall from 6th to the property line of Stonegate Village, which makes this property at least 6, 7, 8% uh, slope. Kids aren't playing out there. Um, it's not flat even going that direction. It, it slopes from Frank's house to my house, um, and it has a dip in it. So it, it's not a playground. It's not made for that kind of thing. Um, some of the referrals have said um, outright that there's no barbed wire fence at the end of Birch at the Stonegate, Stonegate property. Um, I have a photo that shows the barbed wire. If anybody wants to see it, 
Um, if any of the residents want to walk down there with me, it's very easy to see that it's barbed wire. You can see that it's been cut. You can see that somebody has wrapped the barbed wire that was cut back so that it doesn't get in the way of walking through. In doing this road vacation, we spoke to Douglas County Planning and Engineering. They uh, are, uh, they don't want kids to use this access and go across the Stonegate property and try and get across Chambers Road. Frank kind of mentioned this. Um, it's two lanes each direction. There are turn lanes, there is a median, and the speed limit's 45 miles an hour. It's a major arterial. Cars aren't doing 45. Um, if kids are going across there, it's, it's, it's not safe. The county has told us that they want the pedestrians to go down to Hazley, where there is a crosswalk light or cross at Lincoln and Chambers, which is a controlled intersection, um, just for safety. Another uh, referral has stated that the Back in time, the Stonegate Metropolitan District built a trail for horses. Um, yesterday, I went and looked for this trail. Uh, it is approximately at the end of Cottonwood, um, and it's been used so little that there are weeds growing through the cobblestones. In one place, there is a one-foot round yucca in the middle of the path. The path goes to nowhere. It used to probably cross the drainage way, but right now the cobble or the, uh, the crusher finds have fallen through the rock support. And so basically it's just a rock bridge and there's no way that that is safe for a horse. That's on the, that going to the north and to the east. If you, I'm sorry, going south and to the east. If you continue north, it meets up with slightly the uh, concrete pathway trail that was built for the purpose of crossing this at Dogwood. Um, inside that trail also are multiple holes from prairie dogs. If a horse steps in that, it's breaking its leg. Um, and there's at least half a dozen big holes on the trail that I walked yesterday. That trail is approximately 1,000 feet from Birch across land that is not even, that is overgrown, that has trees, weeds, grasses, slopes. From Birch, if you wanted to walk across the Stonegate property, it goes down into the wash, probably drops another at least 10 feet before rising up to Chambers Road, which is approximately the same elevation as 6th. So you're going up 40 feet in less than 300. It's very steep. I think that's all that I had for today. Thank you, Mr. Long and Ocros. And I'm going to ask if there's any questions from the commissioners for the applicants. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Layden, would do you have any questions? You know, I, I do. I, one thing that certainly resonated with me in, in reading the packet, and first, thank you for uh, preparing that and uh, providing the information. But I, I'm wondering the most about safety. Um, when you talk about safety for kids and safety for folks on horseback, can you provide a little bit more detail in terms of how it's been used and, and how the uh, adjoining homeowners would anticipate using it in the future if this is not approved? Um, I've lived in the, the, my, my property for two and a half years and I've seen, not including the last two weeks when we've started this process and, and had the public notices and people coming to see what's happening, not including that time period, I've seen maybe five people down there and no horses. Um, they're not using it today. And, the, and, okay. my, and my understanding is that Douglas County Planning and Engineering doesn't want them to use it. They want them to use the crossings at Lincoln Avenue and at Dogwood, which crosses at Hazley. 
And I've been right. And I, and I have uh, seen more people in the last week down there than I've seen in probably two years. They, they've all of a sudden decided that, yeah, they want this. They want to use this or their or they want to see what's being used. And I think most of them aren't even horse riders. And with me, what I'm, what I'm looking for is also, uh, I put up a, uh, a building in the back there and uh, for access into it, it's got a drive through and I could use that, my site. The one problem is that I can't put anything there because with IREA, I have the easements for them, which covers most of what I will be getting. That answers okay, me. thanks. So Mr. Chair, if, if you'll permit me, I would love to confirm that with Ms. Perez uh, or perhaps traffic and engineering as to the, the current volume of people passing through this particular area. And just to reiterate the position of traffic and engineering with regard to um, its use. Cindy Perez for staff. Uh, we did talk to traffic engineering that um, evaluates the schools and crossings for the students. And they prefer that the students use the developed trail on Dogwood um, because it will lead to the crossing at Hazley on Chambers, which also is a control crossing. Um, Cottonwood is being used informally. Um, they're aware of that, but they prefer that the students cross uh, Chambers at the control crossing at Hazley or at Lincoln Avenue. Okay, thank you, Cindy. So is it your understanding then that the, the homeowners that we've certainly heard from in the packet uh, would not be deprived of access uh, to the particular roads in question, they would just be uh, encouraged to use the existing trail system? Correct, they're encouraged to use the existing trail system. And Stonegate Village Metro, you know, I'm sure would appreciate them maybe being in touch with the district to um, grant their authorization to enter the property and, and for what uses they would like. And from your perspective, would that create any undue hardship for the homeowners to divert their usage to the existing trail system? Um, it's on, no, it's not that far away. How far away is it? Uh, Cottonwood is one block north, and I believe Dogwood is two blocks north. One block and two blocks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I can interject here, and, and Lincoln is one block south. So I, I would appreciate it if you two gentlemen could explain to me what process brought you here. What, what, what happened that apparently you approached the county staff for some resolution and this was suggested to you? Or can you tell me the thought process and the incidents that led up to you standing in front of us? I'm a civil engineer, so I'm aware of this process that's happening. And um, I purchased the property two and a half years ago. And in the two and a half years, I haven't seen people using this. Um, I have a gate that runs off of this road. Frank has gates that run off of this road. So essentially we're the only ones using and accessing it. And so uh, I approached Frank to start this process. And I, <clears throat> I wanted to see you in person because a lot of the referrals are inaccurate. And to have you read those and see them and say, well, geez, that the, they've got nothing wrong. There's a lot of inaccuracies and a lot of things that are outright not true. And I wanted to address some of those. I wanted you to get the truth on it. In fact, uh, on one of the websites that they were on there, I went on there and I didn't want to point the finger at anybody. I just said, you want the facts? Here are the facts of what 
was said, not what was said. Those are not the facts. I mean, the facts of that one of them that's never been used for kids playing volleyball or anything else. These things that they were being said that some of the other people that are have signed on, there's uh, people that signed on that were told different stories of why this they were opposing it. And they jumped on the bandwagon. And I didn't I hope that didn't sound negative about why you're here. We always are welcoming to people to be here. I'm trying to figure out, have, have you been mowing this for t t five years, three years? And so now you're thinking, you know what, I've been maintaining this all along, and it's not safe, and so this is what... I'm just wondering what brought you to decide to do this. Um, well, it's it's a, a dead end, 320 feet long. Uh, it was used for a while there, and then all of a sudden stopped being used. And I was still maintaining it, and then there was even when it was being used I was the one who was shoveling the manure and I thought you know what they, they don't clean up in fact I was going to take a picture of some on the street today that's out not on my street but it's out on one of the streets out there and I, I realized some of these people on the horses can't get off their horses and clean it up they don't have a shovel they don't do anything but uh, that's so I did put a building in, too, and now I, I have access. I can have access to it. I still have a way of accessing it, but this here, this little bit of property, being I can't put anything on it, I can still access from 6th Street coming right down because it is a drive through So is your house on the north side or the south side of 6th? Uh, it's on the east uh, Birch, side. Birch, I'm sorry. Oh, it's on the uh, north side. You're on the north side of Birch. Correct. So you've built a building on the back, the east side of your property, that you access off of Birch to get into. Is that correct? Yes. And when you said they use it and that you would shovel it, are you talking about people would ride horses out there and then you would clean up the manure? Uh, when they were, a while back, a while back when, because I've been here 25 years, so... In the past, some people were using it, but in the present, nobody uses it. And it goes to property that owned, that is owned by Stonegate Metropolitan District. Correct. Right at the end of our property line, the other side of the fence is Stonegate's property. Now, Cindy, while we're talking, if you could pull up the picture that you have, I think it was a picture that was looking west from the Stonegate property, and it showed the fence with the wire on it. If you could pull that picture up, please. Okay, I'm going to give this a try. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> okay. I can kind of add on to your to your question more yes, specifically. Sir. In the two and a half years, yes, we've my wife and I have mowed that property, and Frank has mowed it for longer than we have um, to to keep the weeds down. So yes, we have been in maintaining the property. I apologize, Commissioner. Which um, slide would you like to see? Cindy, you had a picture that I think was, you were standing on the Stonegate property and you're looking west across Birch. Can you see this photo? This one is looking west across Birch. You need to share your screen, Cindy. Oh, sorry. I have trouble remembering to mute and unmute, Cindy, so we're all learning patience. <laughs> is it? This is only my second time, so hopefully it's there. Yes. starting to share. Okay. We have that one. So if, if I could have either of the gentlemen explain. So is this standing on Stonegate's property looking west across the property you're asking to have vacated? That is correct. So that looks like there's barbed wire across there. That is correct. Does it go all the way across the edge over here? Are people able to get through onto the Metro District property? There's a, 
I, ha I have another picture, it's, uh, although the other commissioner that's online would not be able to see it, but there's a small break with, with posts. If you could give that to the attorney, please. And yes, that is uh, the, the end where you would see the arrow. Over a little bit yeah. further is a, uh, oh. it's a steel post, and that over maybe three feet, three and a half feet over is another steel post, and that's the opening that was uh, created. It was wider. They narrowed it down because the four-wheelers and the uh, jeeps and stuff were still able to get through it. So they didn't want the jeeps and stuff in there because it was tearing up the ground. That's so Cindy, you had had a different picture up there just now. Is it maybe looking north from that same location? Yes. Yes. Can you flip to that this one, is please? No, north. Mr. Bocros, I just want to let you know, if, is it okay once you present this to the attorney, it becomes a part of our public record. Are you fine with disposing of that to the county? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. And Attorney Ingalls, would you like to just state... Yes, sir. I didn't want to interrupt. I've labeled that Exhibit 3. Thank you, sir. So, Cindy, this picture you have now is at the same location on Stonegate property looking north. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So the back, the picture on the left side of the picture, Mr. Long, that is the back end of your property. Is that right? Correct. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm going to ask the county attorney a question just to be clear. Do, is it your understanding that Stonegate Metropolitan District owns this property and they don't want people on it? Uh, actually, I'm not sure I can answer that. There, there's a couple different legal issues underlying the question. Uh, Grandview Estates was created in roughly 1955, and some of the information in your packet suggests that this right-of-way was used way back then. That would have preceded any ownership by Stonegate, the Metro District. So it's possible that, that there is a prescriptive easement over this property even before there was any government ownership. So I can't say with certainty that the Metro District owns this property outright. There could be other interests at stake. I do think they're the current record owner. Okay, what I'm trying to figure out is if there's a reason or a right for people to be going through that, through Birch, onto this property or if this is private property. Well, and that's what I'm trying to answer. There may well be a right for people to use the property. There could be a right. There could be. Okay. Um, Commissioner Partridge, if you have any questions, I'm going to think here a little bit. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Actually, I don't have any questions at this time. Would you like to take a moment? For the applicants, we can always ask questions after public comment if you have more for the applicant. Um, if you want to start public comment, I would be okay with that. Okay. Commissioner Layden, no further questions for the applicant at this time? I don't have any further questions, but um, I think at some point, I think it'd be helpful for uh, county uh, attorney Ingalls to provide the board with perhaps a little bit of insight into what a prescriptive easement is uh, and how that interest uh, could have been acquired by um, particular individuals. And that, and I think that might be helpful as we think through this. But I have no further questions at this time. Mr. Ingalls, would you like to address that since it's already been discussed? Yeah, I, I can try and do that. And let, let me share another example with you. Daniels Park Road. Daniels Park Road was established as a territorial road in Douglas County before Daniels Park even existed. Um, Douglas County and Denver over the years have had a dispute whether that is a Denver-owned property that they control or if it's a county-owned road which the county controls. In that case, it's long been the county's position that because the road existed as a public right-of-way, it was actually used by the public before Denver had any interest in the property, and there are records that support that, that it will always be a Douglas County road despite Denver's interest. 
That's been our position. This is similar to that. I won't testify to facts because I don't think that's my place. But there is information in your packet that suggests that this right of way has been used since it was established, or at least since sometime after it was established in 1955, and has been continued to be used uh, over the years. Um, I think that there's information in your packet that suggests that. The question that remains is, did that use establish a prescriptive right, a right to continue to use the property that is now being referred to as the Stonegate Metro District property? Um, and the answer may be yes. Normally a court would sort that out. Um, but the answer may well be yes, that if that property was used for trails, uh, to some degree before any government established an interest in it, that right may continue so long as, as it hasn't been abandoned. Thank you, Mr. Ingalls. And Commissioner Layden, were you satisfied with the explanation through Attorney Ingalls? I am, thank you very much, Mr. Ingalls. Mr. Eagles, if I could just clarify, when you say government, are you referring to the Stonegate, Stonegate Metropolitan District as being a government? Yes, they are a political subdivision of the state of Colorado. Okay, thank you. Very well. At this time, I'm going to open it up for any public testimony on this application. So at this time, uh, I do have hands raised in the audience. And Feel free to come one at a time, if you would. I won't necessarily call out, and then we will get to the phone. But I would just have you come as you feel comfortable. And as you approach the lectern, I'll let you know that please state your name, the spelling of your last name, and your address for the record, please. Good afternoon. My name is Don Lee, L-E-E, -E, 12066 North 3rd Street. Good afternoon. Um, I am for county vacating this property. Uh, my main reason is uh, maintenance of the property. County does not come around maintaining it. The homeowners does. Um, without them maintaining it, there will be weeds. Um, it'll be unsightly. In fact, the, the traffic barrier gate, to me, that's unsightly. So um, since no one is using this plot of land, and beyond that, there's real no need to access the Stonegate property. Um, in fact, a couple months ago, my 12-year-old son and I, we were gonna ride our bike, cross the chambers, and ride around the um, Stonegate neighborhood. And we could not use Birch Street access because there's no way to ride the bike there. Um, pictures don't show you um, exact grades and conditions of the, of the, the, the lot, but it's not safe, so we rode north um, and we were going to take dogwood, but we accidentally took cottonwood. Because it, the cottonwood is more flatter than the birch, so we took that and we came across um, Stonegate property. I had to carry my bike and my son through those property. There's um, anthills, there are prairie dog holes, there's a, um, overgrown weeds, there's rocks. I could not ride my mountain bike. so I carried it, I carried it down the grade to north where I met a uh, paved um, access there, which is in Dogwood. So we used that sidewalk, crossed chambers using um, the, the, the pedestrian traffic um, thing there. So I just want to say, I don't, I don't know how, why anyone wants to use the Birch Street to, and beyond beyond Birch Street, there's it, there really isn't um, anything you can do with that piece of land there. So um, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. It's a race. Good afternoon. My name is Deborah Sherwood, spelled S H E R W O O D. I have lived at 12061 North 6th Street for over 32 years. I strongly oppose, oppose this application. The Birch parcel has been accessible to and used by Grandview residents for 65 years. Um, handout number one shows 52 opposition signatures. 
in your color folder. It's um, handout one. Um, in 1999, our HOA worked with Stonegate and negotiated the buffer between the high density in Stonegate and the lower density in Grandview Estates. Stonegate built the Crusher Finds Trail. They planted trees and they made it usable. People from both sides, Stonegate and Grandview, used that trail a lot. We were unaware of um, Stonegate's position until they referred to this um, application. I spoke with the individual that wrote that, and she was unaware that there was a negotiated agreement between Grandview Estates HOA and Stonegate PD when Stonegate was being developed um, on the north side of Lincoln, between Lincoln and 470. She um, also was not aware that Stonegate had put a trail in there. She did not know that the trail had been there for 20 years. She couldn't tell me when this usage seemed to go away. Um, she just stated it was all before her time. Um, handout to give some narrative on some projects, some Douglas County projects, some information that was in our HOA letters, and some other um, keys as to some documents that may reside in Douglas County. The Town of Parker open space map shows the vacant parcel east of um, Birch as open space. And according to the county assessor's office, this parcel is tax exempt. Stonegate may have created the open space and put in a trail to get the tax exempt status. I don't know, but this is certainly something worth looking into. I ask that the county do this. In the meantime, disapproving the application will keep the Birch parcel county owned until this matter is resolved. Um, there's several uh, things that can be done with um, the Birch parcel other than give, an, give it to two applicants. And um, I'm, conservation easements were mentioned. And this, this would permanently restrict the use of the property in perpetuity and preserve the land for recreation for everyone in Grandview, not just the two applicants. And there's more information on that on my handout number three. The buffer around Grandview has been compromised by the building of the reservoir to the northeast. Um, there's questionable fire emergency access now as a result of what's been done on the east side. Um, I'm not sure how fire trucks would get across um, the field, across the ditch to get to any fires that might be on the east side of Grandview. And we have had fires. We've had fires started by dirt bikes without spark arresters. Um, and we also had an owl or a bird um, that was electrocuted and fell to the ground and started a grass fire. Ms. Sherwood? Yes, sir. And I'm sorry I did not state this prior to public comment, but we often request that you keep your comments to three minutes. You're over that time period. So I know you presented material, but would you mind wrapping it up in the next yes, few moments? Yes, yes. The most important part is I got a letter from the owners that lived on the south side of Frank. Um, Gilbert and Judy Perez, a copy of their letter is in, in my folder as well. And Gilbert states that for the whole time that he lived there, he lived there 26 years, he took care of the parcel, he mowed the grass. The only time that Frank did it was when Gilbert was out of town. So there's some misinformation. Um, concrete paths aren't good for horses to go on, and we would have to go two blocks north. We don't have trail bridle paths. We don't have sidewalks. We only have the road or the ditches to ride in to get anywhere. We've been cut off from, from all of our trails, and it's hard to get out of our subdivision. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sherwood. So I just will state, I'm sorry, I was remiss in making that comment. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sherwood. The, the, we oftentimes will limit to the public comment to about three minutes. So if you just hold it to about that, and we'll let you know if you're around that time. Yes, ma'am. My name is Sharon Stockdale. I live at 12992 North 6th Street in Parker, in Grandview Estates. I am in favor 
of uh, Frank Long's vacate. Mr. Stockdale, would you mind spelling your last name, please? S-T-O-C-K-D-A-L-E. Thank you, ma'am. And I was contacted recently by uh, Deborah Sherwood and strongly encouraged to sign a petition that she was circulating opposing the vacate by Frank Long, the easternmost portion of uh, Bert, uh, Birch. Uh, the reason she gave me for opposing this vacate was that we needed another access out of Grandview and sometime in the future there could be a road uh, put in there. Also access for um, horses and, and, and pedestrian uh, traffic to the east of the property. As it's been stated that um, that, that poor, the um, east side of, of Birch, of, of, this, um, uh, of this land uh, that's to be vacated uh, isn't suitable for horses or even pedestrians. And you saw on the picture there that no horses or no uh, trail has been even used there. If you could, if, uh, I don't know if you brought that back up again, but uh, that picture that shows to the north, uh, you can see that there was never, that it's not a trail. Um, I did not sign the petition and because I uh, wanted to get more information. Um, I have since contacted the uh, County Planning um, Commission and spoke to Jeanette Bayer, the current planning manager, and she informed me that there will never be a road um, on Birch Avenue going to the east. And, and this, uh, um, on this property uh, that would extend to Chambers. The property east of Frank is owned by Stonegate and Stonegate uh, Douglas County staff report, uh, which I'm sure you all have a copy of, uh, states that no pedestrian, equestrian, this is the current owners, owners of Stonegate Metropolitan District. Uh, no pedestrian or equestrian trails have been developed within the tract. SVMD state that it has an access and well easement for CA-1 well that is located at the north end of the property by, res by the reservoir. Uh, for, this is for official Stonegate operations business. The tract is only a drainage tract and is not a public park, as um, Deborah has stated. Um, it will, it will, uh, or will ever be turned into a park. It is open space, but is specifically for drainage. The land abut abutting to the east of this portion is Tract B, Stonegate filing. And um, I've been a resident there for a good 25 years or more, and I have very seldom seen any, um, and I had a horse at one time, and I think I rode uh, on that property like once or twice. Um, it hasn't been used in the last at least 10 years uh, for uh, pedestrians have have walked there, but as you saw from the picture, there isn't a trail established, the picture from the north. So that's about all I have to say, and uh, I am in favor of this vacate because there is no reason why it shouldn't be. Thank you, Ms. Dr. Proof. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Lori Rapucci, spelled R-A-P-P-U-C-C-I. I live at 12861 North 4th Street in Grandview Estates, and I've lived there for 18 years. I have a 15-year-old track student athlete at Chaparral High School. I am here today to request that you deny the application to vacate Birch Avenue, or at least provide a 15-foot open drainage east easement down the center so that everyone may enjoy this property. Why do these two families need to have this property to the detriment of the remaining 258, over 50, who have signed a petition against this vacate? only to fence it off so no one else may use it. Equestrians and pedestrians have used Birch for many years to access the Colorado Trail systems through the open space 
on the east side of Birch. Students at the south end of the community use it and the open space to walk to and from Chaparral High School and the Shap cross country team uses it to come to Grandview where they do their training runs and all have done this for many years. The applicants testify that they themselves maintain Birch, that students do not use it, that Stonegate installed barbed wire fence, that there are other access points for us, that Stonegate states that the open space is primarily for drainage, that there is no visible pathway in the open space, and that it is full of prairie dog holes. My answer to these are much open space in Douglas County is around drainage. The applicants do not maintain the road, and it is mostly dirt from so much pedestrian equestrian and vehicle traffic. The gravel path set by Stonegate in the open space and the dirt path is only slightly overgrown due to the pandemic, but I walked it myself on June 17th and took photos of the path that I submit today. And it's clearly visible and there are no prairie dog holds and there is no garbage. Even Frank Long testified that people do go back there. Douglas County Open Space has told me that they would be willing to maintain the property, Stonegate and Birch, with mowing and weed control. The barbed wire was placed there by developer of Grandview Estates in 1955, not by Stonegate. It was to keep cattle out, not to keep people in. The other access points are not acceptable, as Cottonwood actually does have many prairie dog holes, and Dogwood has a concrete path, and it is much further for the kids to walk, and it is ni neither is as nice as Birch. We submit copies of a correspondence with Stonegate and Douglas County dated 2000 that requested dedication of this space as a trail link to the E-470 and other trails as proof that we have been using this trail and access to it from Birch since, two, since before 2000 and that Stonegate is aware of our uses, usage and has never objected to it or tried to keep us out. The residents of Grandview and others have established an adverse possession easement to the property because there has been open, notorious, continuous access even before and since the Stonegate, the section of Stonegate was developed. Lastly, although the planning commissioner stated that they were conflicted, they believed that they were required to approve this va vacation because the five standards of the road vacation were met. My understanding is that if these standards were met, you may, but you do not have to vote yes. Thank you and please vote no to vacate or at least give us a 15 foot open easement drainage down the center to the open space. I'd also like to say there are no big steep drops back there. And two, those two blocks are very big blocks because it's, we have two acre, you know, it's an open area. And it, that would add 20 to 25 minutes commute to the kids going to school that live on the south end of the community. And some of these people who have testified are not horse people and don't know anything about horse safety. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pucci. Good afternoon. My name is Kenneth Ramsey, last name Ramsey, R-A-M-S-E-Y. I have lived at 3862 M Avenue, Parker, Colorado, 80134 since 1985. And I've lived in Grandview Estate since 1983. Since the 1980s, my neighbor Dave Malcolm, residing at 12750 6th Street in Grandview Estates, and I have frequently gone into the open space on the east side of Grandview Estates. We accessed this open space from Elm Avenue or Dogwood Avenue or Cottonwood Avenue or Birch Avenue. On this open space, we enjoyed many activities and hobbies, including horseback riding, rocket launching, balloon launching, star charting, walking and running the trails. When construction of Chambers Reservoir began in 2012, our access to this open space was somewhat limited but did not stop. The barbed wire fence on the east edge of Grandview Estates was put there before Stone Cape subdivision was built in the middle 1990s. And this barbed wire fence is not a professional installed fence. I have a 1980 aerial photo of this area that shows this fence dating from 1980. To my knowledge, Stonegate never put up a fence in this open space and the Stonegate HOA never complained about our access to this open space area. Grandview residents have been on good terms with the Stonegate HOA for many years until recently. For many years, Grandview residents received the monthly Stonegate HOA newspaper by U.S. mail. Now, the issue of current and future access to this open space is once again in the process of being decided. 
Becoming landlocked, that is one way in and one way out, and sometimes trapped, is a serious evolving issue for Grandview Estates as development occurs around us. And the no vehicle sign at 6th and Birch Avenue has been misused for years. This sign has inappropriately discouraged legitimate access and also county mowing. Grandview Estates was created in 1955. Frank Long has lived on 6th, 6th Street in Grandview since 2003. Mr. Bocros has lived on 6th Street in Grandview Estates since 2018. Frank Long and Steve Brocross did not give Birch Avenue to Douglas County. Birch Avenue was a gift from the whole subdivision. Keeping all of Birch Avenue part of our total community is the best use of Birch Avenue. Frank Long said he would grant an access easement to the utility company to get after getting possession. Steve Brokro said he would install gates for emergency or fire access after getting possession. These statements are not binding, are not legally enforceable, and are not legitimate factors. These statements are an admission that there are ongoing legitimate easements, rights of way, and access issues that this vacate request would stop. Mr. Ramsey, you're here about three and a half minutes. Okay. If you wrap For up all these reasons, moments. I oppose this vacate request and it must be denied. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey. I see no one else in our audience here in the room that would like to speak, so I'm going to ask Mrs. Dunning, do we have any hands raised for public comment? Yes, sir, we do. I will begin unmuting Charles Bucknam. Charles, you are live. Go ahead. Okay, I'm Charles Bucknam, B U C K N A M, 12460 North Third Street in Grand New States. Yeah, this is, Lot 31 was a, a controversy that was maybe. 20 years ago, when they did these vacations up at the end of uh, the north end of the property. And this is the second round, I guess, that's happening now. We have a quite large area behind our house that goes on to Conwood Avenue. So there are a lot of potential vacations for this, this uh, location. We're going to use it. I put together the, uh, the thing that I said just before the meeting, which was a, a material for the Eighth Amendment at Stonegate, at which time, due to large uh, lengthened heights of the building that the, the developer wanted at that time, they made that whole section of open space. Then later on, they took it away and put it into the Chambers Reservoir. And so I've been working on Chambers Reservoir for the last 10 years, trying to get it straightened out. Uh, we are thankful to the county for giving the water district the rights, water rights to under uh, the streets, including this parcel and the open space. And uh, we still owe them a conservation plan for that before we put it to use. But what we're doing right now is just conserving it by not using it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Buckman. <laughs> And Troy, our next hand. Yes, sir. I have Cindy Schuler. Cindy, I have unmuted you. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Cindy Schuler, spelled S C H U L E R. And I live at 12660 North First Street. I am opposed to the request of vacate the east end of Birch. I don't understand why the presenters need this road vacated. They currently have complete access and already use this area to access their properties. They continue to mow birch so they can access their own backyards. There are over 500 residents on approximately 260 properties in Grandview Estates. Properties there have been zoned horse properties. If you approve the request to vacate, you will, de you will be depriving these residents the opportunity to access this area. This will preclude a public entrance from Birch in the future. Please vote against vacating this property. 
Thank you, Ms. Schuler. Commissioner Partridge, this is Troy. I do not see any other hands raised. Very well, thank you, Troy. And I will ask if there is any additional email correspondence that we have received since we started public comment. Commissioner Partridge, I just got another hand raised. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Go ahead. I'm going to unmute Lily Porter. One moment. Lily, you are unmuted. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Lily Porter. I'm a resident at Grandview Estates. My address is 12106 North 3rd Street. Um, I am here to say I am uh, not against the vacation. I think that um, it would uh, actually help our community because it clearly, honestly, this, this piece of dead end land is not, at, it doesn't go to a horse trail. It doesn't go to a place where kids can jog. It doesn't go to a place where kids can play football or frisbee. It is an area that is meant for drainage and not meant for um, horses or people. That land is not suitable. Now in Grandview, we do have a large, I believe it's 22 acres of land between 2nd and 3rd Street for all of the horse people within this community to utilize. And I live right across the street from it and uh, it is hardly ever utilized by the people here in our community. I do know that um, from the last meeting, they stated that there are really no designated equestrian trails around our community. But, other, but there are other question trails that people can trailer their horses to and then go ride within the Douglas County. Um, also, um, I, someone else had mentioned that how would the uh, fire department get to Grandview Estates? Well, we have uh, first, third, and sixth where they would come off of Lincoln into our community. So there's no way that a fire truck could come into Grandview off of Chambers Road. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, I'm not opposed to this. Thank you. Ms. Porter, would you provide the spelling of your last name, please? Yes, sir. P-O-R-T-E-R. -E Thank you, ma'am. Very well, we had head shake. Shaking, we'd not receive any further email correspondence. Are there any further hands raised, Troy? No, sir, no other hands raised. All right, at this time, I will close public comment. And at this time, we typically offer for the applicant to address the board, to address the questions or any comments raised during public comment, if you would like to do so. And then there may be additional questions from the board also. Um, just two comments. One says that uh, we've had a comment here that says that there's one way in and one way out. And and, and, the, and this is Mr. Brokos. I'm sorry, my name is Stephen Brokos. That's right. Um, the, the comment was that there's one way in and one way out of Grandview Estates. And the, the, last, the last comment stated that we have an access at 1st, 3rd, and 6th off of Lincoln, so there's not one way in. Those, those entrances are separated by, I would say a mile, maybe even a mile and a half uh, from first to sixth. And so it, it's got an access. Um, also the uh, police, fire, rescue, all of those guys were part of the, the agencies that were referred for this project and none of them had any objections to closing this off. They don't use Birch to access Grandview Estates. Frank Long, L-O-N-G, and I just wanted to address that uh, it was said that I have lived there since 2003 or something. I've been there since 1995, for the record. Thank you. And are there any questions from commissioners for Mr. Long and Mr. Bocros? Hearing none. Thank you, sirs. Commissioner Thomas, Commissioner Layden, do you have further questions for staff? Mm -hmm. 
This is Commissioner Thomas. Mr. Ingalls, there was a letter in our packet that I'm going to read a paragraph from it to you and see if you can help me understand what this means. Approval of the vacate request could include unintended consequences such as future claims over water rights. Water rights for the Birch parcel are already owned by Grandview Estates Rural Water Conservation District. The Water District continues its mission of protecting water rights for all Grandview Estates residents. Is there anything in this vacation request that this paragraph is applicable to? Potent potentially, but it's also a little remote. So to give context for that, there was a period of time, I'm going to guess around 10 years ago, that the county agreed to quit claim any water rights under the right-of-way in Grandview Estates to the Grandview Estates Rural Water Conservation District. And the district then turned around and adjudicated that water. And so the district, which um, exists only for the subdivision of Grandview Estates, adjudicated water rights under all right-of-way, which would have included this right-of-way. Uh, and they did that with the blessing of the county at the time. So I think what that is suggesting is that if you change the property lines on the surface, there might be a future dispute as to those water rights, whether that be access or something else, I'm not sure. So the reason I can only partially answer that is that's the context and that's the history, but I don't know water law well enough to know if this would create a meaningful uh, dispute in that context. Thank you. So I, I guess I have a, a series of questions, um, both for council and for staff. Um, and I think it probably dovetails with Commissioner Thomas's question. And I guess, you know, we heard some testimony from uh, several folks, including Ms. Rapucci, about uh, adverse possession. I believe she probably means a prescriptive easement. But um, I, I'm wondering, if the homeowners have some form of property right or prescriptive easement, uh, does this board have the legal authority to vacate the road today? And that question is for Attorney Ingalls. As far as the Birch Avenue um, vacation, it would not impact whether or not there's a prescriptive right in the Stonegate Metro District property. So do you have the authority to vacate this? You have unlimited discretion whether or not you uh, wish to approve this application. And I say unlimited, you have five approval criteria in your, zone, in your subdivision resolution in section 7B. Two of those are statutory, but nothing has been discussed today that would implicate those. So for example, you could not vacate a right of way if it would deny a property owner access to their property. But there's been no testimony that would prohibit you from making a decision. So the first two criteria are statutory, and the others are mere guidelines for you. This is county property, and the board can decide to approve it or not as you see fit. Uh, you can't be compelled to vacate, but you also can't be uh, denied that ability should you want to do so. This is not a standard quasi-judicial matter where if the criteria are met, you have no discretion. You have unlimited discretion in this case. Okay, that's helpful. We also heard some testimony, it might have been from Mrs. Repucci, about the approval criteria and whether or not uh, all or some of them need be met for us to approve. Can you walk through that uh, approval criteria for us? In, in terms of, of how many, if, if any, need to be met in order for us to approve? The, the only approval criteria that are particularly relevant are, are the ones, the first two, that, that haven't really been implicated. Um, so you couldn't deny a property owner access to their property. You, you, you couldn't cut off uh, certain things. 
Um, but, but otherwise, you, again, have unlimited discretion. There, there is stuff in your approval criteria that talks about the, the public good, and that's really something that, that only the board can determine whether that is met or not. If you'll give me a minute, I can pull up the, the subdivision resolution, but I don't have it in front of me. Well, and maybe it'd be helpful just to get a general sense from you that if the statutory criteria have been met, uh, that we must approve. In this case, that, that would not be the legal conclusion. The statutory criteria about road vacation are primarily about process. So the statutory criteria, they're in Title 43. Uh, it's about who owns the road and what process must you go through. There are some restrictions, and that's the one I keep mentioning, that you cannot close a road in the event it would deny a property owner access to their property. But again, that, that hasn't been implicated. So to the extent there are statutory mandates, those aren't implicated here. There are processes that must be followed, including notice and other things before you make that decision, but there are no mandates. Okay, so, so a fair amount of discretion. That's helpful, Attorney Ingalls, thank you. So I, I guess my, my additional questions are for staff, and I don't know if Ms. Perez or, or other staff members could answer this, perhaps planning staff, but um, we've heard a lot of, uh, frankly, what I would characterize as inconsistent testimony today. Um, Several uh, folks have said that, that, that no one uses this particular easement, um, that there uh, is other access or another trail system that can be accessed, uh, that the land is not safe or suitable, that there's no fire access um, needed. Uh, others have said that uh, many people use the easement, uh, that they can't use the other trail because it's concrete, um, that the you know the land is safe and suitable, and that that fire access is needed. So, to provide some some clarity, I'm wondering if uh, the appropriate staff member can can uh, clarify for for this board uh, specifically what's going on with those particular issues. Um, this is Jeanette Bear with Planning Services. I'll take a a stab at it, and then maybe Chuck Smith with Engineering can answer as well. Um, so planning staff does not have knowledge or, or an opinion as to how much the parcel is actually used by pedestrians or equestrians. Um, either or the, either Birch Street uh, right of way that's being proposed for vacated to be vacated or the Stonegate Metro District parcel. I think that that's something that you've heard some testimony about, but we don't have any specific evidence or, or really have an opinion on that. Um, whether it's suitable currently, um, you know, it doesn't appear at the end of Birch that it connects to any uh, physical trails, and there could be some grade issues. Um, but, you know, as to whether it's uh, totally suitable for public access, I think that's something that we don't really have a strong opinion on either. We're mostly looking at it in terms of it being used for vehicular access and, of course, uh, engineering um, supports the vacation in the sense that, you know, there will not be a road connection through there. I think there is, um, you know, there is another informal access up at Cottonwood uh, that can be used. And then, of course, there's the, the paved access around the reservoir. But a lot of this has kind of stemmed, uh, and a lot of the discussion is kind of based on does Grandview have the right to use that tract? And um, we, even the short time that we've had between Planning Commission and the board, tried to find some more background on whether there's some sort of a formal agreement. We couldn't find anything in our land use files from when the, the, uh, the land was actually platted, but it, it could be that that needs uh, further investigation, maybe uh, between the HOA and the Metro District to kind of ferret that out. So um, I guess that's my stab at answering your questions. Chuck, do you have any anything to add about Birch Street in particular? Or Cindy? Uh, this is Chuck with the engineering staff. Uh, no, I think you hit it all, Jeanette, um, unless there's anything specific questions to it, but you hit it all. Thanks. And I agree, Jeanette, you um, answered, answered the question. 
Okay. So what I'm hearing is that no one is quite sure what level of use there currently is on this uh, particular parcel. Um, did you, Jeanette, were, were you able to identify whether or not fire access is needed or whether fire access is sufficient? I believe the application indicated that fire access was was sufficient if we did choose to vacate. Yeah, there were no, there were no uh, uh, emergency access, uh, you know, kind of public safety concerns raised by any of the agencies. Okay, and then uh, Ms. Baer, can you uh, remind us what the Planning Commission final vote was? Um, they recommended uh, approval eight to zero. I do believe they were under the impression that, you know, uh, that the approval criteria had been met so that they um, didn't really have an alternative not to approve it. Now that may have been um, an incorrect assumption um, that they made at the time. And there was some, um, reluctance or at least an acknowledgement that there was a concern in the public about you know could they use this this property to access the the metro district parcel had there been some level of historic use or some sort of an agreement or trail um, so they did uh, recommend approval uh, eight to zero uh, but we're curious about some of these same questions okay thank you no further questions mr chair Commissioner Partridge, I have some questions for engineering, mostly, mostly I believe. So, Chuck or Deborah, could you explain? Because what I understand is this is what we identify as county right of way. Can you give me all the uses of a this county right of way that you're aware of? And if I'm not clear with that, I can certainly um, clarify that. Chuck Smith with engineering staff. And Chuck, do you want me to clarify a little bit further what I'm asking? So you're asking right now, commit? Yes, with this is we- If you could, please. Uh, sure. So we have a public right-of-way here. We have public right-of-way that I'm aware of for vehicles, for bicycle, for pedestrian, horse, uh, would that be correct for this type of public right of way here on Birch Street? Yes, that would be correct. Okay. And if we would propose, not that we're going to, but I'm just an if, if we were proposed to build a road, the width, I believe, of this property right now for the right of way is about 50 feet. Would that be adequate to present day county standards to build a two lane road? Yes, it would be. 50 foot would be uh, our minimum. Okay. And then, uh, and Chuck, this may not be, Chuck or Deborah, this may not be a question for you, but if, uh, as we have this presently, the county right away, is it the responsibility of the county to maintain this property? Yes, it would be. Okay. Okay, I believe Commissioner Thomas might have some additional questions. Thank you, Commissioner Partridge. Um, so all of you that are here listening, it's important for you to know that none of us came in here with a predetermined decision on what we were going to do. And I hope you can hear by the questions we're asking that we are looking at all the issues that have come before us and trying to figure out the right decision. And we're always sorry when we've got a small, a close neighborhood that comes in and it's very divided. So we're always sad when we see that happen. 
and we don't want to make it worse. We want to figure out what the right solution is. So these are some of the, the questions that I wrote down as I listened to what you all had to say. So the first thing I wrote down is we had heard that, that someone had, had repeated to others that, that the county was eventually going to put a road through there. Now, it seems like to me from what I have heard that Stonegate owns the property immediately east of this, its drainage, and it is their property um, that there will never be a road that the county will build because it would be a road to nowhere. Um, so, so I don't see any point, any possibility of the county building a road through there. We've heard questions about this being Stonegate's open space. And when we hear open space, what the commissioners, what I as a commissioner think of, is that this is property that has been purchased with county money or through a development process. A developer has set aside a percentage of the property for open space to be enjoyed by the citizens. And what I'm hearing is that Stonegate has this for the purpose of drainage. So it was not a parcel that was set aside for an open space benefit during a development hearing before the commissioners. There's been some question, somebody made a comment that they called parks and our parks department said they would maintain that. So I'm gonna ask pivot to Jeanette Jeanette, do you know about anything about parks committing to maintaining this property? Um, I had a follow-up conversation with uh, Andy Howe with uh, Open Space, and he relayed to me that he uh, did talk to this uh, citizen and explained that you know the best thing to do was to try to uh, get with the Metro District and establish whether uh, there could be public use of the property but he, uh, he told me that he did not say that the county would maintain anything <clears throat> within this tract. Okay, thank you, Jeanette. And I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I thought you might be the best available and, and you knew the answer, so thank you. Okay. Um, so we have heard testimony that if Birch is closed off, that it will remove access to open space. So first of all, this is an open space. It's a drainage parcel. And we've heard that there is access. A gentleman said that he was going to ride his bike across there, realized it wasn't good. So he went one block north to Cottonwood. Thank you. I was going to say Dogwood, but that wasn't the, the C that I was looking for in the alphabet. So thank you. And, and he ended up getting into trouble and having to carry his bike. So then there's also Dogwood to the north. So there would be other access to get to this other property if Birch were closed or vacated. We heard comments about this parcel being a gift to the community. And it's my understanding it wasn't a gift from anybody to the community. It was set aside when Grandview Estates was first platted so that if there was a development put immediately to the east, there would be a roadway to connect into that. And we see that all the time. When there are roads or development that has been done, they leave these pegs or these potential roadways to connect to neighboring property. Um, so it wasn't a gift. It was something that was set aside for future planning purposes. And now because of the way Stonegate has taken the parcel immediately to the east, there is no need for that to become a road. So while I was listening to testimony, I heard two words, fire mitigation, that people are maintaining the property around them, even though they don't own it. Stonegate is the, the property actually that was testified to that Mr. Long said he is mowing the ground that Stonegate owns as fire mitigation for his property. So those are two words that I heard that piqued my interest because it seems like to me one of the reasons to be maintaining this birch parcel is for fire mitigation. 
I also heard someone talk about prairie dogs, that maybe it's a way, if it's, it's mowed and, and keep clean, to keep those little critters out of there because they're not good for your horse property. Um, so those were the comments that I wrote down as I listened to each one of you and as I read the packets. You heard me ask about a water question. And while we don't have an exact answer, I'm not sure that my vote, whatever it is at this point, is going to hinge on that water question. The other question is one that Commissioner Layden brought up. We have heard that there is no use, there is, is no ongoing use for this birch parcel going back to Stonegate's drainage area. Um, we've heard other people say, oh, it's used all the time. So I look at some pictures. There was one picture that Mr. Bachros presented to us that has two T-posts, and there's two big rocks right there at the T-posts, and it does not look like to me that there is heavy um, walking path through that grass, that that grass is not um, disturbed, that would indicate a lot of usage of that ground. So I ask myself, if this board decides to do nothing and vote no on this vacation, what do we have? We have over 300 feet, 50 feet wide, of potential roadway that is never going to be built into a roadway sitting there that citizens are having to maintain for fire mitigation. If we do vote to approve this, it sounds like Two people have stepped up and said they will maintain that property. They will keep it mowed. And in exchange, they will have additional access to get into that property. That is true. So as a commissioner, I don't ever want to do any damage. And I'm looking to see what is the best decision for Grandview Estates. So if we know that this birch parcel is never going to be built into a road. Is this an opportunity for a decision to be made that enhances the overall value of the neighborhood? So that, that's what my thought process is at this point, but I certainly am interested in what my fellow commissioners have to say. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Commissioner Layden? You know, I think, uh, again, I really have to, to commend this board um, for just the thoughtful way in which uh, each testimony is considered, the applicant is considered, uh, the, the staff packet is considered. I know that uh, my colleagues spend a lot of time reviewing these packets and evaluating the information to render an objective decision. And I, I would have to say that, that my train of thought is probably following um, the same line of understanding and logic as Commissioner Thomas on this. And I, I guess I, I would like to hear a little bit more from, uh, from you, Mr. Chair, in terms of where you're at. Um, but from my perspective, the, the legal criteria has been met. Uh, the recommendation of the Planning Commission is certainly uh, taken with uh, respect and appreciation. And uh, the, the comments and information from staff, I think, have been very informative uh, in terms of my thought process. Thank you, Commissioner Layden. First of all, I want to ask a question of the applicants. Uh, and this is not to direct any decision, but in the presentation by staff, there were two conditions of approval. And I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but we usually ask that question if approved, would you agree with the two conditions of approval? And if you're unsure of those, we can put them up the screen or I could read those. The first one being the uh, electrical easement or utility easement uh, underneath the overhead electric lines. Oh. That That's a yes. Okay. That's pretty, it's close, but I think maybe <laughs> it, 
Troy, do we have the ability, or Cindy, do we have the ability to put the criteria, or the, yes, the uh, conditions up on the screen? I just didn't want to mislead you. There we go. Um, number one is a definite yes, and I'm not quite sure of what number two is speaking of. Very well. Mr. Ingalls, you're usually the best at explaining number two. We'll have you provide that? Uh, number two is a standard commission that condition that the board uses for any promises or assertions you've made here at this hearing or in your packet that those are now conditions of approval and if you don't meet them you would be in violation of any approval then yes yes very true okay thank you sirs appreciate it Commissioner Partridge, if I could just quickly add, I think that was really important that he, Commissioner Partridge just asked to clarify because there was a, a gentleman who was at the uh, lectern and said, so we've been told that these two applicants have promised that they'll do these easements and they'll do these things, but those are just words. There's no way for us to know that they're going to follow through on these things. Well, that second condition that Commissioner Partridge just asked the two gentlemen to agree to just said that everything they have said at this lectern is what's going to happen, that they are now going to be held to that. So if this is approved and then they say, oh, just kidding, we weren't going to do that, that's not how this works. The county will hold them to everything they said while they were here. So thank you for that. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Good point. So I'm going to start out with just. May I say sure. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure we're clear on this because when that gentleman said some of those words, he said that we were going to give access easements. Um, we're giving an easement for the utilities, but it's not access for public. Thank you for that clarification. And that's what I understood. Okay. Yes. Great. Appreciate that. So I have to say, I, I lost a little sleep over this one because it's not, a, this isn't easy. It didn't seem like a big issue, but you know what? Every issue we have before us, we take very seriously and take it under great contemplation. And I really appreciate the presentation from staff, the applicant, and the public testimony because it, it helps immensely. So I'm going to just go through some of my points that. The, first of all, I really appreciate the advice from county staff regarding uh, safety for access across chambers, that it's not recommended that this ever be used for any type of access. And that is certainly wonderful because that's one of the worst things we, we have is to believe that we could have impacted uh, the health, safety, and welfare. So I really appreciate that, and that's just a kind of a public service announcement for us all. That is something we very, very seriously take into consideration. As I look at the criteria, as we has been noted by Attorney Ingalls, this is not one of those where it's a if all five are met, we must if because we have an option on it, this type of application to have a little bit of uh, subjectivity with the objectivity we have presented. One thing I did here is regarding the access to the um, Stonegate Village Metropolitan District, that is not clear to whether that is legal or not. I think that, as Attorney Eagle said, that would probably be a not probably, would be a, a court decision is to look at that whether it's a legal access or not. So that just, you know, creates interesting thoughts to go through. But that is not what really this application is for. It's not about considering access as I look at the criteria. Because in 705B01 and 705 B02 do not relate to that access into the Stonegate Village Metropolitan District. Related to that, if this property was vacated, 
not knowing that historical use, that could be a legal right that somewhere down the line that the Stone Cape Village Metropolitan District would have legal access to the two parcels that would be created. Just want to make that point known. And a, uh, the last one, which really has uh, set my mind to a decision, really comes into when we have looked at vacation of properties in the past, the majority of the time it's regarding a road. And I firmly believe there is not the need or the desire today or will there be in the future for road access. Pretty firm to be confirmed with that. Would have to say I am not sure that there would not be, and that is why I asked the question about the what is this public right of way use? That public right of way use does include vehicles, bicycle, pedestrian, horse, and probably some others. I am not convinced that that would not be the case in the future. So with that, I am not in favor of this vacation of the property because I see there possibly could be future public use. And I will refer to 705B05 that for the public health, safety, and welfare, that may occur. So I, as a commissioner, don't feel comfortable to say this property should be vacated. But I also want to note that the two property owners, I think, have been impacted to a degree. I think they've done wonderful as of present day taking care of this property. I did ask a question, you know, is it county's responsibility to take care of it? Yes. Sometimes we, we have to up, up our game, no doubt. But I really appreciate the property owners bringing this forward because I think they are impacted to a degree, even though it is not their property now, they are somewhat impacted. And I know that it's the neighborly thing to get along, and that's what we always like to see. And even as we look at this hearing today, I really appreciate the civility we have in Douglas County. We are very fortunate to have that among all our residents. So I thank you all for that. So for myself, commissioners, that is my decision is to say, I see there could be, and again, we're not legally sure whether it would be legal access or not, that there could be a future use, public use of this property. Commissioner Layton, would you like to weigh in or would you like me to? Uh, thank you for that, Commissioner Thomas. I'll, I'll reflect on that a little bit here, but I'll be curious to hear your thoughts as well. Um, certainly uh, understand and respect uh, the chair's position. Uh, I suppose I am probably moved the most by the, by the, the testimony and the staff uh, implication and um, testimony as well that, that the safety of this particular route um, is just not there, that they do not recommend uh, at least current use by uh, kids, by horses, um, by anyone. The intersection of the uh, 40 mile an hour uh, road is just not uh, appropriate for uh, the, the use contemplated by those that would, would oppose today's application. So I think that's significant. I guess maybe one consideration I would have is whether or not this particular area could be suitable for future use. But then I go back to the fact that it was clearly stated on the record that just a, uh, a block uh, away and two blocks away, there is uh, a similar access um, for, for all those that would intend to use uh, this particular parcel. So I don't see that, you know, based on the, the criteria that, that the owners would be deprived of any access uh, or ability to, to navigate the property. They would just have to do it in a safer way in the uh, adjacent trail system um, or in the, uh, the approved nearby uses. So uh, I'm, I'm still fairly convinced that this application would be appropriate under the approval criteria. Thank you, Commissioner Layden. I will weigh in in that this land was set aside for a road to connect to a future development. And that is not going to happen because Stonegate is using that property right now for drainage. 
And I don't think that it makes sense to commit the county to continue or to start mowing this property and maintaining it if it is never going to be used as a road. And while we have listened to the neighbors and we understand that, that there are several neighbors who, many neighbors that are not in favor of this vacation, I think that looking forward long term, that the best use of this road is to approve this vacation so that the land will become someone's responsibility, it will be maintained. And uh, Commissioner Partridge, you talked about 705B.05. It says the approval will not adversely affect the public health, safety, and welfare. Uh, in the packet was a letter from South Metro Fire that they do not use this for a fire response, and they would not. Um, and we have heard that there is cottonwood and dogwood, and there is also a large parcel further west that can be directly used for equestrian uses. So I am not convinced that we are negatively impacting any of those three by vacating this property, so I will be in favor of this application. Commissioner Layden, any further comments? Or if there are no further comments or deliberation, we will accept the motion. OK. Um, if you don't have any additional uh, comments or discussion, I will make a motion to approve a resolution vacating the easternmost portion of Birch Avenue located in the southeast quarter of Section 7, Township 6 South, Range 66 West of the 6th Prime Meridian, Douglas County, Colorado, with the two conditions as presented, project file SB 2020-018. Second. So we have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor state aye. 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 All opposed state nay. Nay. The motion passes two to one. Thank you for bringing this forward. Congratulations. We're at now 442. I'm going to request that we take a eight minute <laughs> recess. If I'm looking at Commissioner Thomas, will that be acceptable? I can, I can do it in eight. Eight minutes. <laughs> we'll take an eight minute recess and we will reconvene at roughly 4.50 p.m. I just want to say thank you, Commissioners, for taking the time to hear this. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, too.
And as Commissioner Layden, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Very good. Thank you. We will reconvene. And next to our agenda is item 2C, Trails Preliminary Plan, Project File SB 2020-048, presenting for staff, Caitlin Zeiler. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Caitlin Zeiler representing Planning Services. Before you is the Trails Preliminary Plan. The project number is SB 2019-048. The subject property is owned by Smoky Hill Trail Estates, Inc. Tom Clark with Ventana Capital and Rob Fitch with Rick Engineering are here as the applicant's representatives. Also, we received an additional letter from the public after the date of the staff report. That letter is from Janet Taylor and discusses concerns with wildlife and traffic. The letter was forwarded to the board today and I would like to officially enter that into the record. The request is for approval of a preliminary plan for 139 single family residential lots, 12 tracks, 2.5 miles of regional trails, open space and associated public roads on 290 acres. The intent of the preliminary plan process is to provide an in-depth analysis of the proposed subdivision, including a review of the design considering the ability to obtain water and sanitation, identify geologic hazards, environmentally sensitive areas, wildlife habitat areas, source of required services, vehicular and pedestrian circulation, storm drainage and water quality, relationship to surrounding land uses, and conformance with the master plan. The preliminary plan process begins with the submittal of an application. Following comments by staff, the request is sent is forwarded to referral agencies. At the beginning of the referral period, courtesy notifications of an application in process are sent to abutting landowners. Staff further analyzes the request and the applicant is provided the opportunity to address any issues identified through the referral period. Public notice is provided and the request is heard by the Planning Commission prior to consideration by the Board of County Commissioners. Referral responses were standard in nature, noting specific recommendations and requirements. The City of Aurora requested the applicant submit applications for all necessary access permits, license agreements, and easements directly to the City. One member of the public, uh, one additional member of the public commented on the application. Concerns included preservation of the site's history, equestrian access, and protection of existing landscape and vegetation. All referral agency comments are outlined in the referral agency response report and referral response letters included with the staff report. The Planning Commission heard the proposal at a public hearing on June 15, 2020 and recommended approval by a vote of 8 to 0. One member of the public residing in the Whispering Pines subdivision of the City of Aurora expressed concerns about traffic along Samson Gulch Way. The Planning Commissioners recommended substantial the Planning Commissioners commended the substantial open space area and public trail component of the project. Commissioner Bierbaum requested the applicants and staff specifically implement the dark skies, water conservation, and energy conservation objectives identified in the Comprehensive Master Plan through the final platting process. The project site is outlined in red here. It is located immediately south of the city of Aurora and northwest of the intersection of Piney Lake Road and Inspiration Drive in the northeast corner of the county. This is an aerial view of the project site. Open agricultural lands lay to the east across Piney Lake Road. Five and 10 acre residential development abuts the property to the south. The Live in Good Hills subdivision is zoned as state residential and abuts the property on the west. A water and sewer services agreement was completed in December of 2018 between the Trails LLC and the City of Aurora for service through its utility enterprise, Aurora Water. The water and sewer service agreement established a perpetual service agreement for the proposed 139 residential dwelling units. 
Water rights underlying the trails PD have been conveyed to the city as a condition of the agreement. The site was rezoned from Agricultural One to Plan Development with approval of the trails PD rezoning by the Board of County Commissioners in July 2019. The PD established a 100 acre residential planning area, a 174.6 acre open space planning area one, and a 15.4 acre open space planning area two. The residential planning area allows a maximum of, of 139 lots. The 190 acre open space planning areas are subject to an open space agreement to be reviewed and approved as part of the final plat process. The application proposes 139 single family residential lots clustered in the northern portion of the site. Residential development will occur on approximately 50.7 acres of the total 290 acre site at a gross density of 2.1 dwelling units per acre. Tracts owned by the Homeowners Association or Trails Metro District for utilities, drainage, and open space will occupy approximately 10.9 acres of the site, with 12.9 acres of the site dedicated for public rights of way. Four points of access are proposed, three from the north off Samson Gulch Way and one from the east off Piney Lake Road. The remaining 215.8 acres of the 290 acre site will be reserved for open space and will include 5.19 acres of multi-use public trail system for pedestrian, equestrian, and bicycle use. A trail parking area is proposed adjacent to the Eastern Access Road from Piney Lake Road. The proposed open space and trails will be subject to an open space agreement to be finalized at the time of final plat between the applicant, Metro District, and Douglas County. This is a view from Piney Lake Road looking east towards the project site. The future access point from Piney Lake Road is visible here on the left. This is a view from the intersection of Piney Lake Road and Samson Gulch Way looking southeast towards the project site. The trees in this area of the site will be preserved with an open space tract OS2. This is an aerial view looking south from Samson Gulch Way towards the project site. The approval standards for a preliminary plan request are set forth in section 403 of the subdivision resolution and listed on this slide. Staff's assessment of the approval standards is discussed in detail within the staff report. Staff has evaluated the preliminary plan request in accordance with, the Douglas, with Article 4 of the Douglas County Subdivision Resolution. The preliminary plan is consistent with the use, density, and development standards established by the Trails PD. Should the board find that the approval standards for the preliminary plan are met, the following proposed conditions should be considered for inclusion in the motion. Condition one, prior to recordation of the final plat, all necessary access permits, license agreements, and easements from the city of Aurora shall be obtained. Condition two, prior to recordation of the final plat, the applicant shall provide all required cash in lieu of parkland dedication fees to Douglas County. Condition three, prior to recordation of the final plat, an open space agreement between the applicant, Metropolitan District, and Douglas County shall be executed and recorded. Condition four, prior to the issuance of a building permit, all required Douglas County School District fees will be paid by the applicant on a per dwelling unit basis. Condition five, Colorado Parks and Wildlife literature shall be made available to both prospective homeowners and home buyers regarding the existence of wildlife in the area and how to minimize conflicts. Condition six, during construction activity within the development, the applicant, its successors and assigns shall take all reasonable care to watch for historic resources, paleontological resources, and other cultural history resources and shall immediately notify, notify Douglas County and complete appropriate Colorado Office of Archaeology and historic preservation data management forms in the event of such discovery. Condition seven, technical corrections to the record copy of the preliminary plan exhibit shall be made to the satisfaction of Douglas County. Condition eight, all commitments and promises made by the applicant or applicant's representative during the public hearing and or agreed to in writing and included in the public record have been relied upon by the Board of County Commissioners in approving the application 
Therefore, such approval is conditioned upon the applicant's full satisfaction of all such commitments and promises. Section 405.08 of the subdivision resolution sets forth the parameters for the board's determination on preliminary plan requests as noted on this slide. This concludes staff's presentation. I'm available to answer questions regarding the staff report. Otherwise, Tom Clark and Rob Fitch are here as the applicant's representatives. Thank you, Kate. Caitlin, questions for staff at this time? Caitlin, thank you for your presentation. This is Commissioner Thomas. Um, in the packet, it talked about a stoplight that eventually will go in at Piney Lake and Samson Gulch. Uh, do you happen to know if maybe a year ago there were several accidents and a fatal accident that happened on Piney Lake? Is this that location? Do you know? Um, this is Caitlin Zeller for staff. Yes, there are. Um, that intersection has been a point of concern. One of the, com one of the commitments in the Trails PD requires that um, the city of Aurora as well as the applicant will be partially responsible for installation of a street light there. Um, but I would maybe defer to Debbie Kula with engineering for details on that. Thank you, Debbie. If you are available, the packet said that the developer will pay 25% of that uh, signal. I'm wondering who is going to pay for the other 75%. Commissioner Thomas, this is Debbie Kulo for Engineering Staff. Um, we have worked out with the City of Aurora that their rule is that every corner of development has to provide 25% towards that signal. So they have developed on the northwest corner and the northeast corner with the City of Aurora developments. And then Douglas County is on the southwest corner and there's currently an undeveloped parcel of land on the southeast corner. So we would expect if that should that site should develop, they would contribute their 25% of the signal to the city of Aurora so that when that signal meets warrants, then yes, they would um, install the signal. So if what I heard you said, Aurora will pay 50%, we will pay 25% or our 25% will be paid for by the developer. Our 20, our, we'll have 50% on the Douglas County side, but one development is in only. The other side is still vacant land on the south East corner. Okay, got it. Thank you, Deborah, for that information. Um, you know, this packet was very well put together. I wrote lots of notes, and those were the only questions I have. So, Caitlin, if you did this, nice job. Thank you. Thank you. And I would echo that. What a wonderful and comprehensive packet, Caitlin. Uh, nice job. I don't have any uh, additional questions, and we'll be in favor of the uh, application. And a follow-up question to the stoplight. Do we know when or what the trigger will be for that stoplight? At, the si uh, oh, excuse me, Commissioner. Uh, yeah, I'll just I define, it at, define it at Piney Lake Road and Sampson Gulchway. Uh, the um, signals are installed based on signal warrants. So there is a manual of uniform traffic control devices regulation that defines that there have to be so many studies done and the studies have to be met and then once that um, once that rule is met then they can look at implementing a signal good and if i'm correct with the, that has already been looked at to some degree and it did not warrant it as of yet so i'd imagine this if and when traffic would increase whether this uh, goes forward based on a decision at the end of the hearing that will be determined at a later date that's correct, and it will be determined by the city of Aurora. Okay, thank you. No further questions for Caitlin at this time? All right, at this time, I will ask the applicant, sounds like it's Mr. Tom Clark or Mr. Robert Fitch, or both to present, and I will ask if you, when you present, if you would state your name, spelling of your last name, and your address for the record, please. Good afternoon, uh, this is Tom Clark with Ventana Capital. Uh, my last name is spelled C-L-A-R-K. Address is 9801 East Easter Avenue in Centennial, 80112. I'm here with Rob Fitch of Rick Engineering. And you can ask for the next slide, please. 
And here's just an outline of our presentation. We will try to be brief and just hit the highlights of some of the features of our project and then be available for questions uh, at the end of our presentation. Uh, next slide, please. And our objective today is to obtain your approval of our preliminary plan. Uh, next, next slide, please. The, as, as Caitlin's uh, pointed out, the property is in the northeast uh, corner of the county, uh, right adjacent uh, to the city of Aurora. We obtained the zoning and the plan development last year. Uh, next slide, please. And if you recall, that hearing um, went on for quite a few hours, and we followed, I believe it was a Sterling Ranch presentation. Uh, uh, but we had many of the neighbors uh, around this property attend the hearing and speak for us. Uh, speak in favor. They also voiced some concerns. Um, in addition to those those neighbors, or I guess a result of those neighbors showing up, were um, uh, the result of us going to the neighbors around the property, meeting with them, talking to them. We had a neighborhood meeting uh, with them within one of the adjacent owners, uh, I guess barns in their on their property, and. We uh, actually took a, a group of the neighbors, uh, walked the property with us to help us um, align the trail uh, that we that we're proposing. Um, and so our, our and that's the kind of a, a depiction of our of the PB. And we uh, believe our preliminary plan uh, adheres to this. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, you know, we we designed it to to keep the res the. The lots clustered in the center, the northern portion of the property, and keep over 200 acres um, as open space uh, with the trail and a few features that, that Rob will get into. We believe our plan is uh, uh, in compliance with the subdivision resolution and consistent with the comprehensive plan. So now I'll, have, I'll turn it over to Rob, who will get into some of the more details um, and, and highlight some of the features of the project, and then we'll both be available for questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners and members of staff. My name is Rob Fitch, F-I-T-C-H, and I'm with Rick Engineering. Uh, my address is 9801 East Easter Avenue. Um, and just to add to um, what, what Ms. Uh, Zeiler and, and Tom have presented, um, I have a couple slides here highlighting the components of the preliminary plan for your information. Um, so included is, is 139 single family lots. Uh, they're highlighted in blue and the roadways are in white. Um, they are clustered along the northern property line. Uh, we are maintaining a minimum lot size of 10,000 square feet. Uh, most of our lots are actually larger than that, averaging around 15,000 square feet. And a part of the plan development process is we really folded in the estate residential lot standards. Uh, meaning we have 25 foot front and rear yard setbacks, 15 foot side yard setbacks, and a maximum building height of 35 feet uh, as commitments carrying forward. Um, one of the keystones of the project as we've highlighted is really the dedication of open space. Um, we have a reference here of a minimum of 190 acres of open space. That's really the large vast area that has the trail um, along the southern and western property boundaries. Um, in addition to that 190 acres, we have the OS number two, which is in the right-hand corner. So we're totaling over 200 acres of dedicated open space. Um, and we'll highlight that a little bit more in, in some slides. Uh, we are gonna be proposing a minimum two and a half mile multi-use trail for public use. Uh, that'll be available for uh, hikers, equestrian usage, um, and we have a parking lot and a trailhead that we'll highlight a little further. And then in addition, we've been able to really incorporate the preservation of the existing topography, drainage ways, and vegetation. Uh, you can see on the graphic on the right, um, kind of in the upper right-hand corner, there's a large cluster of ponderosa pines, and there's a large cluster in the middle of the property. Um, we have really been able to design the roadways and lots to minimize any impacts to those um, existing vegetation. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the topographic drainage ways that we're uh, able to preserve with this development by clustering the lots to the north. Uh, next slide, please, Caitlin. Uh, a little bit more on traffic. Uh, we have submitted a traffic impact study that was uh, reviewed by Douglas County as well as the city of Aurora. Uh, we're proposing three access points from the north. Um, you can see the western um, uh, pocket of lots 
uh, has two access points off of Sampson Gulch Road. Um, that is an Aurora uh, City of right away. Um, so as we move forward in, in um, the final plat process, we'll be working with the City of Aurora for access permits uh, for the three access points connecting the Sampson Gulch Way. And then we have a fourth access point off of Piney Lake Road, uh, which is a Douglas County roadway um, for secondary access into the eastern uh, portion of lots. Um, as we highlighted a little earlier, our contributions and dedications um, uh, commitments that we're carrying forward is we do have a 25% financial contribution for the future signal that was briefly discussed. Uh, we also have some dedicated right away that will be given to the city of Aurora to accommodate the location of that signal. And then along the easterly limits highlighted in the orange dashed line is we have a 10 foot right away dedication to the Douglas County for uh, Piney Lake Road. Um, just to highlight uh, Commissioner Thomas's uh, question on the signal, uh, we did get some feedback from the city of Aurora on our traffic study. And in late 2019, uh, they did look at this intersection to understand if it was meeting warrants. I think it was meeting three of the four warrants required for a signal. Um, they're going to continue to evaluate that. So I know it's on their radar for um, in the immediate future, uh, but they have been evaluating it as early as late as um, uh, late last year, 2019 and early this year, according to the city of Aurora. Uh, next slide, please. A little bit on utilities. Um, central water and sewer services are going to be provided by the city of Aurora for the water services agreement that was established in late 2018. Uh, we have utility plans, our water and sewer plans in process and review by the city. And we'll also be processing licensing agreements for them to come in and uh, access and maintain their uh, utility systems. On the left, you can generally just see the, the conceptual layout of the water system. Uh, we have a looped water system serving both sides of the uh, development, and we're connecting to an existing water main in Samson Gulch Way. On the right, you can see the uh, sewer system. Um, it is a gravity sewer system. All lots will drain to the north, and then right where that little circle is um, is where we have a point of connection to connect our um, municipal uh, or gravity sewer system to the municipal service. Next slide, please. Um, as it relates to storm drainage, uh, the site really, uh, the majority of the site drains from the south to the north. We have four proposed detention and water quality basins that'll be able to detain and treat any water before it connects to the storm drain systems that carry north into the city of Aurora. So during final platting, we will also be working with the county and Aurora um, to ensure that the storm drain system uh, connections are in compliance with both agencies. As it relates to the preservation of existing topography, um, generally all these lots are designed kind of on the northern edge of ridge lines that carry through the, the property. Over to the left hand side of the graphic, you can see um, a little bit of the pine trees to the upper left and down to the southwest. Uh, those are drainage draws that are existing today. Our development won't have any impact to those. Those will remain as is. And then the drainage ways uh, that are currently flowing from the south to the north, we're able to um, uh, treat with our detention and water quality basins adequately. As it relates to electric and gas service, electric will be coming from IREA um, and gas will come from Excel. We have incorporated requested easements for those dry utility services within the preliminary plan. And Phillips 66 does have existing, um, a pair of existing gas line transmission lines. You can generally see the scar across the land um, from the southeast to the uh, northwest. That's an existing gas line with Phillips 66. Those uh, gas lines will stay uh, and remain, and so will their easement. Uh, we have presented the project to Phillips 66 and got a preliminary plan approval. Uh, we will be pursuing licensing agreements and final construction documents with them uh, moving forward in the final plat. But all of our lot separations and building setbacks are all in compliance with the design standards that they have issued. We have fire protection from South Metro and public safety services will be provided from Douglas County Sheriff's Department. Next slide, please. 
a little bit more into the open space trail and landscaping. Um, as referenced, we have over 190 acres of open space. Um, the large, vast green areas of open space will be owned and maintained by the Trails Metropolitan District, which was established last year in 2019. And it'll be governed by an open space agreement that we will be processing with the county through the final plat process. We're providing over two and a half miles of multi-use trails for public access that I'll highlight in an upcoming slide or two. Uh, we do propose some landscaping along Sampson Gulch Way, um, which is the northern property line, uh, to the point where we're revegetating um, some disturbed slopes. We have some entry monument landscaping and signage that we'll present to you. Um, it's currently a drip irrigation system, so low water use um, for any of the proposed landscaping associated with the development. And in the incorporation of the trail and the development around the Ponderosa Pines is really um, in the trail that'll really be built on grade through the rolling hills. Um, we'll really incorporate the, nat the native uh, topography and vegetative feel that exists out there today. In addition, we've uh, um, discussed and in our preliminary, in our plan development, we have a commitment to incorporate dark sky lighting within the subdivision. And so that's in reference to pedestrian scale street lights with full cutoffs. And then there's also some dark uh, sky lighting concepts as it relates to dimmers and uh, down shields on lightings that will certainly be encouraged for all the residential homes and incorporated into the CCNRs that the HOA will regulate. Next slide, please. So the graphic on the right here is a little bit more in detail of some of the trail amenities and, and uh, development monumentation that's incorporated. Um, as referenced, we have over two and a half miles of the multi-use trail for public access. Um, the trailhead is in the purple square on the right-hand side of the drawing. Uh, we have a small parking lot area that should be able to accommodate a few pedestrian um, uh, sized vehicles um, and uh, uh, two to three uh, equestrian trail trailers. Trail signage and rest areas are incorporated. So you have essentially a looped trail um, and then there's a couple cut throughs and then you can see the blue circles there are really shade structures um, with a little picnic table for some rest areas. And we'll also have some strategic benches um, and trail signage along the way at nice viewpoints. Uh, next slide, please. So just a little bit of the concepts that we're incorporating. Um, on the left side of this graphic, you can see the major entry monument. So we'll have two of these larger develop, uh, trail signs um, at the access points. You can see a conceptual graphic of the wayfinding signage that will be placed sporadically along the trail. And then on the right, you can get a, a depiction of the shade structure, the picnic table. Um, we're gonna incorporate some hitching posts and some benches that really have more of the rustic Western feel that should really fit within the, the environment um, and more so complement it versus being um, something that would stick out of, of nowhere in this nice open space. Uh, next slide, please. As it relates to schools, um, during the plan development process and, and carrying forward into the preliminary plan, uh, we've met and discussed with Douglas County School District um, two commitments that we're carrying forward. Uh, one is a cash in lieu of land dedication equivalent to 3.1 acres on a per dwelling unit basis that will be paid at the time of building permit. And the second commitment is a mid-range contribution towards Douglas County School District capital mitigation of 2,837 per dwelling unit, also paid at time of building permit. So in working with Douglas County School District, we've been able to satisfy those commitments um, for this development. Uh, next slide, please. So a little bit of the look ahead for us. Um, we're gonna continue through the subdivision platting uh, that began last year through the rest of this year. Um, in 2021, we anticipate the start of construction with home occupancy anticipated in 2022, with a build out the following year of 2023. Next slide, please. So as Ms. Seiler um, has um, uh, in great detail in her staff report, um, described the uh, compliance with the preliminary plan um, approval criteria. I have that highlighted on the, on the screen here for us as well. Um, 
the conformance with the master plan, um, we're in the northeast sub area of the master plan. Um, and so the estate residential, uh, the clustering of the lots and the dedication of the open space um, certainly complies with the goals and objectives of the, of the uh, Douglas County Comprehensive Master Plan. Uh, design elements of the preservation of the topography um, and the drainage ways uh, is, is incorporated. Uh, we have water and sewer services from the city of Aurora. And drainage improvements are incorporating the natural drainage ways and capturing them before they run off the site and connect to the city of Aurora drainage improvements. Adequate transportation, um, roadways accessing all lots with uh, access points that are meeting uh, design separation criteria. Um, and all access points do operate an acceptable level, a level of service um, at our opening year and at the horizon build out year um, of 2035, or um, I think that's what our current study says. I know it's 2040 now. Um, protection of significant cultural, ar archeological, natural and historical resources. Um, we have performed a class one and class two um, cultural studies. Uh, we did a phase one ESA um, and do not have any significant uh, historical resources or cultural um, or archaeological resources present. Um, during construction, the uh, commitment of if anything is discovered underground, uh, stopping work and notifying the county will be um, conformed with. Necessary services, fire protection, recreation, utility services, streets and open space are, are, are well incorporated into our development and we do not have any interference with extraction of known commercial mining um, operations. Next slide, please. And then highlighted on this screen here are the eight conditions of staff approval um, that Ms. Seiler uh, read to you. Um, I won't repeat those. This is just an acknowledgement that we are recognizing these conditions of approval um, and uh, acknowledge them and accept them. Next slide, please. And so with that, the proposed trails preliminary plan uh, complies with all criteria outlined in the subdivision regulations. We feel it's consistent with our plan development and the Douglas County Master Plan. So at this point, we would rec respectfully request the Board of County Commissioners uh, approval of a trails preliminary plan. And we're available for any questions and comments that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clark and Mr. Fitch. Appreciate it. Questions for the applicants? I have done. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Layden. And I have none either. Wonderful uh, presentation. And certainly this is consistent with my review of the legal criteria and continues to support my, my desire to approve uh, this application based on the approval standards. Thank you. And I have no questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. Clark and Mr. Fitch. At this time, we'll open it up for anyone in the audience who would like to address the board regarding this application. No one in the room. I will ask Mrs. Dunning, are there any hands raised? Thank you, Commissioner Partridge. There are no hands raised. Very well. And we did receive one email prior to the hearing. And I, I know Commissioner Thomas and I have that available to us. And I wonder if the applicant has seen this email from a Janet Taylor. I will ask that when that comes time. Seeing there is no other response for public comment, we'll close, close public comment at this time. And I will ask the applicants, I'm going to first ask the if you had seen the email from a Miss Janet Taylor. Uh, this is Tom Clark. People referring to a, an email of June 15th. Uh, yes, we have that letter. Okay. And if I may, I'll address her a couple of concerns that she poses there. Um, we, and I'll let Rob uh, correct me, of course, if I'm wrong. Uh, but she, 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 has, she generally supports the project. She had a couple of concerns on the height of houses, uh, street lights, and uh, traffic, uh, namely uh, access off of Piney Road. And I'll say that the houses are, uh, as, as Rob stated, 35 feet in height, limited to that. And we have attempted to, to build them such to take advantage of topography. There, she will see some houses from her, from her property. Um, it, it, there's not, no denying that. There, there, she's going to see some houses. 
Um, I'm, I'm not sure, depending on where she is in which house and which house style is built, I'm guessing it's going to be 10 or 15 feet she's going to see the houses. But we have tried to take advantage of this property. For street lighting, we have committed to uh, the uh, dark sky, I'm not sure what it's called, dark sky standard where um, this, this, the lighting is shielded and pointed downwards. Um, on the traffic, uh, I, I will tell you honestly, that gave us me the most concern. Uh, and I think we addressed the intersection and the, the light at that uh, Piney Lake and Samson Gulch, which sounds like it will be um, um, addressed perhaps sooner than later with three of the four warrants being, being hit. Uh, and then she also was concerned about the lack of a left, dedicated left turn lane when you're going northbound on Piney Lake, making a left into the subdivision. Um, and I'll let Rob talk a little bit more, but the traffic study looked at this and that left turn was not warranted. Uh, Rob, do you have any other comments on that particular issue? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I think it described it as we looked at all four access points um, and looked at opening year and at the build out year. Um, the current configuration of that access off of Piney Lake Road um, actually operates at a high level of service um, with a through lane and a shared left um, going in because there's a limited amount of trips that come in from that um, access point. So um, it is not required. Very well. I think you probably addressed everything that I was aware of. Any further comments from the applicant? And then I'll ask if there's any further questions from commissioners for the applicant. Uh, no, I don't think we have any further comments other than thank you for the consideration and we would please urge your approval. Thank you. Questions from commissioners? I have no questions. Thank you. And I have none, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I have none for the applicant and I would just uh, verify. I know engineering has reviewed this and with the issues regarding Piney Lane inspiration, I think the engineering has looked at this thoroughly and we will certainly look at what's necessary as traffic impacts may or may not occur in the future. So with that, are there any further questions, any further deliberations or discussions? I have none, Mr. Chair, and I have a motion if you're willing to take one. Yes, please. Mr. Chair, I have a motion to approve the trails preliminary plan with eight conditions as presented project file SB 2019-048. Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor state aye. 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 The motion passes. Congratulations and thank you for bringing forward a, a good quality project. We know it's been a Great. long road. Great. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. This time that concludes all the items on our agenda. Therefore, we are adjourned.